The scripture today is the triumphant entry into Jerusalem, and it's found in Matthew 21, one, verses 1 to 11. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives. There, Jesus sent two of his disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the village there ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied up with her colt beside her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything, tell them. The master needs them. And then he will let them go at once. This happened in order to make come true what the prophet had said. Tell the city of Zion, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a, of a donkey. So the disciples went and did what Jesus told them to do. They brought the donkey and the colt, threw their coat cloaks over them, and Jesus got on. A large crowd of people spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds walked in front of Jesus and those walking behind began to shout, praise to David's son. God bless him. God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise be to God. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was thrown into an uproar. Who is he, the people ask? This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee, the crowds answered. I have a story to tell, a remembrance of sorts, of sorts, a story about the timeless Christ experienced by a man who knew him, saw him, loved him, and ultimately believed in him. Although this man knew the whole story, it is the Palm Sunday moment that he recalls here, and many moments that led up to it. A day came when Jesus was welcomed into the city, as he tells it. It was a Hosanna day, a Hallelujah day. Music and laughter and palm branches, children and young people and adults waving and applauding as he walked by. There was joy in the air, a sense that the most glorious, unexpected miracles were about to happen. I was there. As I watched it all, I was pulled back to the first day that I saw him and to other days that pulled me towards him. The first time I saw Jesus, he was already known to me, at least the stories about him were known to me. His reputation had preceded him. It was on a Galilean hillside that I first saw him. He made his way easily through the crowd. He was followed by a small entourage of men and women. Disciples, they called themselves. What was astounding to me was that they looked so average, so ordinary, nothing special about them, nothing outstanding. They were not the rich or the famous or the powerful or positioned. They were just regular people. And what astonished me as well was not so much that they followed him, but that in doing so, they had left everything behind. Family, jobs, 
everyone familiar, everything familiar, to be with him. I couldn't imagine me doing such a thing. Why would they do such a thing? Why would anyone do such a thing? As I watched him that day, there was nothing particularly impressive about him. He looked quite average to me. He didn't have airs like the other religious leaders I've known. He wasn't dressed in ecclesiastical robes. No, there was nothing particularly impressive about him. Still, I was drawn to him. As a flower is drawn to the sun. As a river is drawn to the sea. As a lonely heart is drawn to a loving one. Jesus. There's something special about that name. Something about him. There was something. I couldn't name it then. But it called to me, it beckoned me, it compelled me. It caused a deep and indescribable yearning within me. And then I heard him speak. There was something in his voice, an authority, an authenticity, a trueness trueness that I had never heard before. His words moved me. They challenged me. They pushed me. Pushed me to see the world I thought I knew in a different way. With different eyes. Pushed me to see the people around me in a different way. With a different heart. Pushed me to see myself in a different way. Above all, as a child of God. When I had the chance, when the busyness of my life allowed it, I would try to be where he was. I heard things that I'd never heard before, and as I listened, I hung on every word. He told a story once about a runaway boy who was loved even as a runaway, and who was forgiven completely when he finally came home. He told a story about a man who searched for one of his sheep that was lost, even though all the others were safe, even though one out of a hundred really wouldn't have been missed. He searched for it. He found it. He rejoiced, and he took it home. And he said that God, the God of creation, the God of my forebears, the God of my faith, the God I thought I knew, was like that. Like the Father, forgiving. Like the shepherd, searching for us. Because even one life lost matters to him. And I was pushed to wonder, could God love me that much? Me. When I had at times in my life been like that runaway boy. Me. When I had at places in my life been like that lost sheep. Me. Jesus said that day and other days much like it that God did. He said that in the eyes and the heart of God every one of us has value. Even me. Not because we were good but because we were his. Not because of anything we did or were, but because we were his. 
And when I heard that, joy swept over me. Joy like a spring rain cleansing and nourishing the earth. And I trembled in the realization that the love of God was bigger than the sometimes smallness of my life. That the forgiveness of God was greater than any sin in my life. And believe me, there's a lot of it. And I began to see with new eyes that such a love required something of me. Not in a demanding way, but in an inviting way. If I believed it, if I really believed it. And if it was true for me, it was true for everyone. Jesus called me to see myself in a different way, above all, as a child of God. And Jesus' love compelled me to see others in that much different way, with a different heart. That was a truth dawning in me. It is in loving and being loved that life has meaning. It is in loving and being loved that the purposes of God are fulfilled. That was Jesus' way. God's way. And I came to see that it should be my way, too. In Jesus, in his life, it all became so real to me. There was life not just in his words, there was life also in his deeds. I saw those who were crushed by sin forgiven. I saw those who were bent with despair given hope. I saw those who were broken with sorrow, mended. I was there, or I was those who were exiled and excluded, and I was welcomed. I saw those who were physically wounded, healed. I saw those who were defeated by the troubles of their lives, given strength to bear and deal with and rise above those troubles. I saw life after life after life being changed. And I never saw anyone in need being turned away, whatever the need. And then one day, he looked at me as I looked at him. And I knew that we were one forever. It was as though it was all said and done. It was as though he had come just for me. Just for me. Jesus won many to himself. Those who saw in him the incarnation of God. Those who experienced, while being in his presence, the very presence of God. Those who heard in his voice, God's voice. Those who saw in his actions, God at work. It seemed for many that eternity had stepped into time. It seemed as though Jesus himself was the unexpected miracle the God within us and with us. Jesus won many to himself, and he won me. All of the old ideas I had about God seemed tired and worn out. All of the understanding of God I had seemed inadequate. There was something about Jesus that I could no longer deny or dismiss. And when I finally took that step 
when I finally yielded to the wonder of it all, my heart was strangely warmed. And I knew, not in a way I could prove, not in a way I could yet explain, but I knew. I knew that I was loved by God. And the power of that love could help me become the person God wanted me to be. I knew that I was loved by God. And the power of that love could help me live a life of love towards others. I saw many, many, many of Jesus' miracles. Many of them were unexpected miracles that changed the lives of those who received them. But the most unexpected miracle was my miracle. The miracle of life restored, the miracle of life reborn, the miracle of a life redirected. I became the unexpected miracle. A day came when Jesus was welcomed into the city a day of hosannas, a day of hallelujahs. And music and laughter and palm branches. There was joy in the air, a sense that the most glorious, unexpected miracles were about to happen. I was there. And as he went by, he saw me, he smiled at me, knew me as one of his own. And I too shouted, Hosanna. I too shouted, Hallelujah. And as I watched, I believed more deeply that Jesus was God's unexpected miracle. That he had come to save us, to save us all, to save even me. The moments that were to follow would be devastating moments. Moments that would break the heart. Moments that would crush the spirit. But this day, this moment, was a Hosanna moment. My Savior had come. Peace be with you all.